part of the data management team at, at uh, EasyMIP at PIC. So there, the next speakers are all those that are really taking care of, of data and submissions and so on. Um, and Ilyusi, please uh, tell us about the submission process and everything. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is, um, I'm gonna guide you through the process of how to contribute to EasyMIP and also how to access data um, in case you don't want to contribute yet. Um, if you have any questions, here's the email of our data management team and we will be happy to help you. Um, for, so first of all, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, um, there are different ways to follow up on what ECMAP is doing. Um, you can be a follower or you can be a participant. Um, you can get to know what is happening on ECMIP and see the data uh, from different portals. My colleagues uh, will talk about it later. Uh, and you can follow us in, we have different email lists where you can get information on events, achievements, protocol releases, and so on. Uh, this is all explained in our website. Uh, you can check it there. And now we can move to the preparation of your simulations. And the next slide, please. So this is uh, the three steps you have to follow uh, to prepare your contributions for ECMI. This means if you want to participate in a specific simulation round following the ECMI protocols, um, the first thing you, would, you should do is to contact the sector coordinators. Uh, this is also specified in our website. And if you have any doubt of who to contact, you can always refer to the ECMIP coordination team um, and they will help you. Uh, afterwards, then you will have to prepare for uh, your submissions, which means you have to check on the ECMIP protocols and the guidelines because we have different, uh, we have specifications on formatting of the files and also on the different uh, scenarios. And on the terms of use, because when you contribute with your data there, um, you will be credited for your contributions in different ways, depending on who is accessing your data and when, and I will comment on this a bit later. And finally is to contact the data management team once you have reviewed all the, uh, the guidelines on the ECMIP scenarios, uh, and you're ready to start uh, moving on with the contribution. Uh, you contact us and we will create three things, your model dash uh, dashboard account. And this is to help us keep a database of the ECMI participants uh, per sector. Uh, we will also create a models entry, an entry in our website for your model. And there's where you will have to document your model. Um, we also have specific conditions on naming for your models. Uh, depending on version because we have to we want to keep track on the development of your models also if you stay for different uh, simulation rounds or if you make changes on your model and finally we will create a, a model there uh, a directory for your model within our dkt set um, the server and the dkt set is the german climate computing center and is where we store all the ECMI uh, data and we uh, input and output data and where you will have to upload your simulations. Um, so I will comment now on, the, on how to prepare your simulations. Um, you will, in the protocols, what we have is all the information you will need to run your uh, simulations consistent with other models, also participating in a simulation round. Uh, you will see uh, the experiment design, the input data specifications, and how you have to, how you should report and uh, sector specific information too. Um, you will also have some information on, on guidelines of formatting, file naming, uh, more technical aspects of this. And um, yeah, so once you are ready to, uh, to contribute, you should be aware of the terms of use because initially your data will be stored there, the card set, and it will be available for all ECMI participants only. And during this time, before it goes publicly uh, available, 
uh, there are uh, specific uh, conditions in terms of use. So here you see on an image, we have information in our website divided on the terms of use when your data is on the carrot set, on the embargo, which means, yeah, before it goes publicly available, and then different terms of use apply once they are available to everybody. Um, and to everybody, this means we have two other platforms where your data will be available. Currently, is an, on ESGF. Maybe some of you are already familiar with it. And we are now launching our ISMIP uh, server. Um, and my colleagues will talk about it later on. And the exact, exciting news of 2021. So yeah, they will comment on that later. Once your simulations are ready, Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you can move on. Thank you. Um, yeah, you well to prepare your simulations. Actually, you also will need to access the input data. So, where is the data on the CAD set? To access, you need to create an account. Here is like an example of how you create like an image of the page where you created. It's quite easy, and you will be you will have access to three storage storage spaces. Uh, Home, work, and scratch. Work is where all the ESIM uh, data is contained. Um, within the work storage space, you will also upload your files and you will access the output data, input data. Um, there is, it's only for uh, putting your data. There is no computation time allowed, uh, of, um, yeah, provided for you there, unfortunately. But we can, uh, of course, help you in, in case you need it. Uh, next, please. So once you have your simulations and you want to submit them, you submit a few of them and we will perform some quality checks on formatting and soon to come also on the, on the data. Then when your files pass these checks, they go uh, available to all ISME participants and they stay like that during an embargo period which is up to a year after we publish the uh, simulation protocols uh, for a simulation round. And this can be extended, but this should be um, first agreed with the ASME coordination team. And after this time, the, your data goes publicly available. And there are four things you have to take care of, which is the, the license for your data. Uh, and you have to complete the documentation of your model and with this data, uh, we will create a DOI. So your data will be rem will remain there for the longest period so that you, everybody can consult your data at any moment. And there are different terms of use that apply. Yeah, next one, please. So this is the folder where you, the, you will have to upload your data. Uh, the better you do it, the faster it will be checked and published. Uh, we, our, your submissions will be done on the NetCDF format. It's a specific uh, format. If you're not familiar with it, we also have guidelines on our website and tutorials and to help you how to manage this uh, format. Um, and yeah, we ask you please to just submit a few files in the beginning so we check them quickly. And once they pass, you can continue and upload all your files because otherwise if we have to check uh, thousands and it takes longer, of course. And now, uh, recently, we released the ESME quality checking tool uh, so that you can try some of these checks uh, on your own. So please, next slide. And this is the list of things that uh, you will be able to check on your own. Headers, dimension variables, data variables, attrib local attributes, and so on. So this is uh, more easy to use on Mac and Linux machines, but we also have instructions on how to do this if you are working on Windows. And you can check our GitHub page. And finally, uh, I would like to tell you a bit more about this embargo period because many people ask about this. Um, so the, um, yeah, during this embargo period when your data are only available on the carrot set, uh, if anybody uses your data there, from there, they are obliged to offer co-authorship to at least a representative of the modeling team, of your modeling team and the ISMIP sector coordinators 
and cross sectoral science, science team. Um, after this embargo period, they are not obliged to do it, but we strongly recommend it. So, and if you want these conditions to change, you please have to uh, consult with us first. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Um, for those of you who uh, already downloaded data from the CMIP uh, 5 or 6 archives, uh, will be uh, familiar with this. Uh, for those who are not, I give a, a short introduction about um, how to how to handle uh, this page. Um, it's available at esg.pick-potsdam.de. You will find the the link also in the slides afterwards. Um, this is the the start page where you find some sections about uh, what EasyMIP is, um, what kind of data is uh, available on the page. Um, here the uh, direct link to the to the archive uh, for searching data and later on um, how to download and some uh, help, uh, help links, um, tutorials, FAQs and for experienced users uh, even um, how to access data via an API. So, um, for, for ESGFs, we, we are, as the name reveals, part of this uh, Earth System Grid Federation. We provide uh, one of many nodes. Um, but as said before, this uh, server will be decommissioned uh, next year and replaced by um, our own development, which uh, Jochen will talk about later on. Uh, until that, we uh, keep this server online. It mainly provides, it mainly serves data from A EasyMIP 2A and 2B simulation rounds. But um, for EasyMIP 3, the input data is available as well. So if you want to download data, just uh, click on the search page and you will be presented with, uh, on the left side, with um, these search categories or search facets. You can uh, select uh, which uh, simulation round you want uh, to, to search data from, uh, the kind of data, those, the data type, if it's input data or output data. Um, I will just uh, give, you, give you an ex example. Um, the, the sector maybe. So if you have made some, some selections, you can always click on search and uh, the results will be uh, limited to what is available with these uh, facets applied. And then you just uh, boil it down to, to a certain variable, um, you can, which you can select via the um, variable short name or the long name. So you see now this is limited to, to this one, but uh, the list would be longer if I would not have selected a certain variable. Um, to download the data, you need to create an account, which is uh, your, your, so your personal area is, uh, is on many other websites on the right upper corner. Um, if you have one in the ESGF, um, you're fine. You can use that. Um, doesn't matter uh, on which date an ESGF node you created this account. Uh, if you don't have any, just follow the link, fill the mask, and uh, you will get your confirmation via email. And you will also then get uh, your account details, which consist of an open ID and your password. Um, you don't have to remember your, your open ID, which is uh, um, it consists of mainly of, of a link. Um, it, uh, only, it's only, only the, the, the data node um, you created your, uh, your account on is, is needed. In our case, uh, accounts are not hosted on our server, but uh, our default identity provider is uh, again DKRZ with their own instance of an ESGF server. Then uh, just uh, log in select your identity provider. 
and fill in your username and your password. So, and then you will have um, more options. Um, oh, again, um, I have, so it's better to log in first and then do the, do the selections because uh, the selection will be, uh, it's going to be reset on login. Um, ah, there's no, op sorry for the delay. There's no, of course, no output for EasyMap 2A. Simulations coming in for 2A slowly and will likely uh, be only available on, on the new portal. So I just uh, pick the first data set found. Uh, as you can see, there are, there are many of them. And uh, here, each, each row is uh, one search result. You can uh, take, a, uh, um, take a view on uh, the files included in this data set. In this case, it's, it's only one because it's monthly data. And you have a direct link uh, to download the data. But you can, if you are interested um, in, in a subset consisting of, uh, of more than one uh, variable or, or climate driver or sector or, or, cl or climate impact model, you can uh, put these into a data card. Um, where the link is uh, just on the bottom of, of e each box. I just add two here. Um, if you think you're done, then click on the upper uh, right hand, uh, my data card link, and you have the um, possibility to create these wget scripts, which you can uh, invoke on a Mac or on a Linux machine, and which uh, then will download only the data you selected uh, onto your computer. Um, so I think, yeah, you have to, to select which one, which uh, data sets from your data card you want to uh, have to be, you, you want to include into your wget script, and then you will be presented with this uh, script and can download and execute it. Um, yeah, I think. No, thanks. That's, that's it, yeah. Thanks a lot, Matthias. I think this is a very, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Christopher. Um, so I will now show you a kind of a preview of our new um, repository system, which um, basically my task is uh, to develop. And everything you see is already available on data.ezimip.org, so you can test it. And, and we are very happy to, to receive your feedback uh, if you like it, and also if you find any, any bugs which, is, which are still there. Um, can you go to the next slide? Uh, wait, I have to go in the presentation mode, sorry, full screen mode, and now, yes. Yeah, so um, the, the new archive will be um, a replacement to the ESGF uh, system that, that Matthias just showed. And um, we try to basically keep all the good things from the ESGF system, uh, system but uh, improve it so that it's more, let's say, more adopted to our use case of, of climate impact data. So uh, here you see the, the main search interface, which is looks a bit like the uh, ESGF, which you just saw. Um, you have a big search bar where you can put in like arbitrary uh, strings, which you can, um, which then the, you can search the archive for. Um, on the left part, you have, a, 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 you see kind of a, a tree-like organization of our data, uh, which, which organizes more the, the internal structure. Um, a bit the things that, that Katya mentions in the beginning that we have uh, simulation rounds, and then we have different data products, and we have different uh, forcing uh, data sets and models and everything. Uh, but you can also, you see these little facets uh, on the left side, left top side, you can see, see this little facet uh, uh, button. So you can change to a view that is more similar to what Matthias just showed you, where you can select variables. Um, so in the, in the main part, you see a listing of the data set, as, as we saw before. Um, one difference is that we got rid basically of the accounts, so you can do everything because the data is public. Um, you can download all the data without having without the need of an account, um, and but you can also like select different data sets in a, in a kind of um, yeah, uh, shopping basket way, but um, basically on your browser without without storing that on on our server. 
um, as before, we organize the data into, into data sets, or the files into data sets. And for each data set, for example, the first one is MRI minus ESM something something. Uh, you have a button which shows you all the files in that data set. Um, you can you have buttons to see more uh, more information. Um, you have a button to to configure the download. I will come to that in a, in a minute. Um, and you can also download a, a, a basically a plain text list of all the files which you can use in in programs like WGET, what Matthias mentioned, to uh, to bulk download files in a more productive way than uh, clicking each, uh, each uh, separate file. Um, the idea is that you can use this archive um, if you are not so technical versatile, you can you can basically uh, use it in your browser and download similar files. But if you have uh, more experience with, with command line tools and programming, you can automate these, these tasks of downloading files. Can you go to the next slide, please? Also for each uh, data set and file, we have a separate, uh, so we call it a so-called landing page, which has a like a permanent link. So, so you can, if you are want to refer to a certain data set or file, you can, you can use this link with a unique ID and uh, send it around via email to your colleagues, for example. Um, what we also do, what Lucy already mentioned, we create uh, so-called digital uh, DUIs, digital object identifiers for, for data sets, for uh, categories of input data or for sectors and output data. And these DUIs can be used to, to cite a data set in a, in a publication like you would do for, um, for uh, a paper, for example. And uh, the, the commitment is that these DUIs, which are kind of uh, short links, uh, remain stable for uh, for a long future for a long time um and uh, can be used to basically refer to these to this data what you used in your in your publication for your science uh, for the next years to come for each data set and file we also have a little you see that in the in the little screenshots it's called uh, uh, site s so it's kind of a recommendation or a suggestion how you should use uh, how you should attribute and cite the data set in uh, your your work Okay, can you go to the next slide? Um, one thing I mentioned there is this for, for all these uh, data sets, there's a, for most data sets, there's a configure download button. And the idea is here that we have a little, little program running on your server where, which you can use to, um, to restrict your download to certain, uh, to certain countries, for example, for global data sets or for certain bounding boxes. So, so uh, rectangular shapes in north, south, west, east uh, boundaries. Uh, boundaries or just the land data so that you can uh, shrink the data you want to download on the server side because these data sets are really big and uh, even with a, with a good institutional uh, internet connection it will take some time so if you're just interested in one country you can perform these tasks on the server and download only a, a smaller data set next slide please um this is, I, I think i will just very, be very brief on it uh, as i mentioned we um you can use these uh, more sophisticated command line scripts to interact with the archive. You can download, you can download uh, file lists, which you can use with WGET, or you can even, because we got rid of the accounts, uh, all the data sets are in principle public. So if you know the location of the file, you can just download it with a, with a browser or with a WGET directly. And you can even, you see that in the, in the, last, uh, in the last box, um, kind of mirror a certain directory on the, on the web server which is a bit like you would use uh, with the rsync tool on, on, on clusters. Um, can you go to the next slide? And if that is even not, not enough, you can interact uh, programmatically with this archive. You can use the API. So if you have used an API before, you will be familiar with what is on the upper half of this slide. Um, and also we created a new Python client. So you can use this API with all programming languages you want. For example, R is quite popular. Um, but if you use Py Python, like a lot of people, you can also use our little client we, we published on GitHub, which, which wraps this API into a nice, nicer interface. And this is basically, uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, this was an overview about the new repository, which is already live, and we will uh, subsequently uh, publish or republish the ESM2 output data on this, on this archive now. And uh, we're very happy if you, if you try it out and send the feedback uh, as well as all other uh, input you have to this easement data at um, um, email.
email address. Thank you. Yes, thanks a lot.